I'll re this is Generation Next, and as you know us by now, you know any comic with Emma Fosties is my best one. Some people think I only love her because she is usually half naked, but look, she is wearing a full body suit and not showing any skin. I mean, this is probably a latex rubber suit, so it will be really sexy and accentuate her tits and arse, but shut up. I am properly in love with Emma Frosties, you big cynics. This is the start of a good run on Generation Next that doesn't ever get any acknowledgement. This is issue 45 and with Emma Frosties on the cover, you are probably thinking this comic, it couldn't possibly get any better. But watch this, it has got a recap page, it's got an inverted fold out recap page it's an advert inside but on this side it is a recap page i guess they just didn't have enough backstory to have to fill you in on and just because the recap part is not a fold out bit it doesn't mean that i didn't love this recap page fucking bring them back first page of the story where you got emma frosties and I really love her. Can you please tell her that I love her? I know Marvel, they are stupid and they had her split up with cyclists, so if she wants a new boyfriend or a husband, I would like to be it. She looks amazing in this suit, but she looks amazing in everything, even when Marvel recently shaved one side of her head. The premise for Generation Next is that Emma Frosties and Squealy, they are the headmasters of the excellent men's school and they are training the newest generation of newties. Emma Frosties, she is in an angry mood and that makes me upset because I didn't like to see her in any pain. And there is Squealy. For me, Emma Frosties and Squealy, they are the main draw for this series. And I'm less fussed about the kids that they are training. We have got Julie Lee, of course, and that is four skins behind her. And this one down here is Decibel. Part of the reason I am less inclined to like a character like Decibel is that he apparently listens to fucking Paul Weller. Recently, there was apparently a big storyline, I think maybe our in Uncanny Excellent Men, where there was a big psychic war, and everyone with psychic powers briefly lost their ability, and that is why Emma Frosties and Decibel, they have been thrown for a loop. Uh, Decibel, for example, he is unable to even communicate without his telepathy. But what he's really torn up about is that the girl he fancies, Ush, she has gone away. Then we have got a scene with Cinch and a pink haired girl who I know nothing about because she leaves the book like straight away in this run. So Emma Frosties, she is working out her issues by literally working out and looking fantastic while doing so. How I would love to be that punching bag right about now. Uh, this is before Emma Frosties could also turn to diamonds. I imagine she would be a lot less annoyed if she knew she still had powers and she could turn to diamond. And Emma Frosties, I fucking love her, but like she is a great character. She is, as hollow as these words have become... She is a strong female character. She is someone who, I think, truly earned the title. She has suffered. She has suffered a lot. She is deeply flawed and hasn't always been a good person. And I think all those failings make her a far stronger character than someone like Storms or anyone Christopher Clairvoyant writes. Emma Frosties, she is a real person. She is fun to read. She is someone whose presence honestly raises the quality of any comic. Uh, we have got a great bit here. Uh, Emma Frosties, she is refusing to give in and she's like, 
I do not cry. Even though Squealy is trying his hardest to offer her a shoulder cut to Mu and Artie and Leech, who are fucking adorable. Uh, Mu, she's probably my favourite of the Generation Next students. Uh, we've even got a great bit with Mu here. She was affected by the psychic EMP wave. Uh, that is what they call it, a psychic EMP wave. She was affected by it too, and she lost her telepathy, but nobody bothered to ask her about it or express any concern about her because she still had other mutie powers like super strength. Uh, this run, it starts with issue 45, this one. But then the next issue to get is issue 48. Uh, that's if anyone is saying, yeah, this looks good. I'll check them out. Uh, issues 46 and 47 are by different creative teams. Uh, you want Generation Next, issues 45, 48, and then everything through to 62. Uh, there's also an annual. Uh, we've got some more stuff with Emma Frosties and Squealy. He gets fed up of trying to help Emma Frosties and offers himself as a punching bag. And then all the students, they're trying to spy on them as their two headmasters spar with each other. Uh, this is a pretty standard thing in comics where characters, they fight to let off steam and resolve issues. And just as Emma starts to realise that she might not need her powers anyway, they miraculously come back. And look, she is so happy that she is crying. And then there's a lot of double page breaks in the story. Uh, we have a fun bit with her and Squealy doing a back and forth. They are friends. And we close off the other strand with Decibel. He can finally talk again. All the psychic powers, they have returned. But we also have him saying that, actually, his power came back a few days ago and he has just been depressed and didn't feel much like talking anyway. And we end with Squealy. He gathers together all the students, takes them outside for an assembly where Emma Frosties looks gorgeous and announces that everything will be changing. This one is a downtime issue and sometimes I think it is good to start off a run with one of them. It allows the writer to get a feel for the characters or set up new status quos for them while at the same time functioning as a good introduction of the book's cast to potential new readers. This is good, it is good writing, it is good art, it is a good woman. I want a marrier, so I'll have it this seven thumbs up.